Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I recently listened to a podcast, Diary of the CEO with Stephen Bartlett, and he interviewed someone, I believe his name was Jeffrey Sexton, but he is like the go-to divorce attorney for billionaires, millionaires, professional athletes, movie stars, celebrities, whatever. And the conversation was a lot about divorce, but at the root of it was relationships. He, they stated that 56% of marriages end in divorce now. Here we are in 2024. And that 86% of people who get divorced actually remarry within five years. What's amazing about that is the reason they're remarrying is because we need to be in relationships. We as humans need to feel secure. We need someone to bounce ideas off of. We need someone to feel safe with. We need someone to protect us, so to speak. And so being in relationships becomes very, very important. Now, we're not talking about marriage and divorce today per se, but we're going to talk about how your relationships personally and business actually go together. They do influence the one or the other and how you can focus on your relationships to improve the success in your business how you can safely and respectfully set boundaries to protect yourself without being selfish or appearing selfish. And overall, I think it's important that we just kind of sit with where this conversation goes today because we know scientifically that the more friendships we have, the more people in our life that we interact with, the healthy our mental health is, our emotional state is, and the healthier that is, the more success we're going to be able to achieve in our business, the more impact we're going to be able to have. Without further ado, Nikita Thigpen, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Oh, thank you, Robin. I'm excited to be back in the space with you recording a conversation on air for once in a really long time because we have such juicy conversations off air. <laughs> <laughs> we do. So listeners, Nikita interviewed on the show, oh my goodness, several years ago now, and I've interviewed on her show a couple of times and we became friends and we actually get together. We meet in the middle and have lunch about every four to six months, something like that. And these aren't just lunches. These are hours of time spent together, getting to know each other and just loving each other up. So she has become a dear friend and she is a relationship expert and she works with power couples to help them navigate relationship challenges and strengthen their relationships so that they can achieve the success that they've been called to achieve. So Nikita, will you tell the listeners just a little bit about your work and then we'll dive into the, the meat of our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, I mean, you said it so perfectly. I don't know how much more I can add to that beautiful description of what I do, um, except for sometimes the women founders, entrepreneurs, leaders that they are, I call them potent humans, will come to me individually and say, you know what, my spouse, my partner, my forever lover, as I like to call them, they're not quite ready and or willing to do the work. So I want to work on me so that I can make sure that my business is going to thrive and I don't have to sacrifice the success because I'm losing parts of me and who I've become now that I'm very different than maybe who he married X number of years ago. So most of the couples that I work with have been together well over 10 years. That's not every single couple, but many of them have you know, they, they got some street in them. They've had some time. They've had some experience. They've managed through crisis, trauma, births of babies, loss of babies, births of business, loss of business, and change of careers, and lots of uh, navigating of those transitions that have all impacted their personal and their professional relationships and made them really look at who they're becoming a lot deeper. So the self-actualization is really the crust of the work that I'm doing as a balance and relationship advisor. Mm, I love that so much. So Let's talk about that for a second. So when you are a person who is a high achiever, a go-getter, mm -hmm. someone who wants to do well for the world, do well for themselves and have an impact while making money, I yes. mean, that's 
a, that's why you're an entrepreneur, right? So let's talk about how, how do these, how do we as women create this environment for a healthy relationship at home that's going to allow us to achieve the success that we want in our businesses? Yeah, a lot of it is looking at the social disconnection that's coming up, not only with your partner, but those relationships that are impacting how you show up with your partner. So especially for women, because all creatures are social creatures, right, in terms of humans. But for women, we have a deep innate need to be connected in a more intimate way. And I'm not just talking about sexual intimacy. There's so many layers to, to intimacy beyond sexual, emotional, physical but there's this creative intimacy. There's also this conscious kind of um, intellectual intimacy that we crave that sometimes the partner who we share the bed with isn't the partner that we receive that intimacy with. And many times it's not because they can't give it to us, it's because we haven't allowed them. We've, we've allowed other people to take those positions. So a good example for a couple that, let's say they met in their 30s, uh, was married by mid 30s, have been married for a good eight to 10 years, that woman in that relationship, assuming a heterosexual relationship, already has her ride or die friends, right? She has the girlfriend that she calls when she needs to fuss and cuss. She has the girlfriend that she calls to pray with her, to you know, ground her in the reminder of her excellence and where God called her to be. She has the, the girlfriend that's a little wild that has all the stories, but sometimes when you just need to live vicariously through someone else, you're like, let me call, right? Like she has these people that play these positions and then here comes Mr fulfilling so many other layers of the intimacy need that she craves, but she hasn't allowed him to fulfill that need for, let's say, the um, recreational intimacy, which is where she plays. Because she's like, I don't need to play with you. I'm going to call Tina, <laughs> right? Like me, me and Tina go away for weekends and spa treatments, and we play in intimacy that way. And sometimes we'll do that, and that becomes the life that we've created with this person. That person feels like, oh, I don't need to. She doesn't want me there. Maybe I'm not appreciated there. I'm not respected there. And at some point along that marriage of their couple, both of them start to feel more unfulfilled because they want more of where they're not allowed to play in each other's lives, especially when we're talking about people who are more mature in age when they came together, whether this is the first marriage or the second, or sometimes in, in many cases, no judgment, but many cases, the third or thereafter. And because that's happening a lot of times, that we don't realize that those other kind of platonic friendship relationships are actually impacting how you show up literally in the bedroom and all the way through to the boardroom. Mm, yeah. So what do you do in that situation? I, you don't want to get up your friends, but you need to allow this person in. So I think this is related to establishing boundaries. Yeah. You know exactly where I'm going. All those good juicy conversations we've had off air. She's like <laughs> a perfect pair for this. So yes, there's the boundary with your your friends, but remember, people can only do what we allow them to do, right? In in terms of a consistent basis. So Tina, Lisa, John and Jasmine, these friends that are kind of taking up certain spaces or filling certain gaps that should be reserved for you and your man, they're, they're only doing it because that was the relationship you set up. So now we have to create a different dynamic and reposition them, but we have to do it in a way that is both emotionally intelligent to the reality that they're not doing it to harm you and your relationship. Um, and also you're not trying to harm them in the repositioning of them and kind of uh, backing them out of those particular gap fillers, if you will, those love gaps, as I call them. So the first conversation you have to have is with yourself. Why have I continued even after marriage, even after I've committed myself to this other human to, you know, love and to hold and to cherish and sickness and in health? Why am I still allowing Tina, Lisa, John and Jasmine to fill these particular positions? Like what's going on with me that I didn't choose to be vulnerable in those areas with my spouse? 
This isn't a judgment of shame or blame. It's an acknowledgement because we have to start with awareness. As a trauma specialist and a clinician, those are hats that I never put down. They are enveloped as into what I do as a balance and relationship advisor. I always have to look at the awareness. Do you have the awareness to know why? Because if we can point to why, then we can get to the how. So if your why was, you know, honestly, it was just easy. You know, maybe my lover travels often. He's not really there a lot. He really wasn't into spa treatments and all. Like if your why was kind of logistical, then that's an easier fix than if your why was because I think that if he saw those other sides of me, that maybe he saw the more playful sides or the more refined, polished, which some people would call bougie sides. If he saw that, that he wouldn't love me the same. That's not a reflection of, of your person, of your spouse, your forever lover. That's a reflection of how you're seeing yourself through their eyes, which usually is anchored to something much deeper, typically, honestly, in your younger years. Mm -hmm. And those younger years being between birth and between seven and nine years old. So we can get to the why, then we can create the how. So for everyone listening, if you're like, well, I'm not really sure, Nikita, I just need a quick fix. Well, you know what they say, the things that you get quick, you lose quick too. So just being mindful that a quick fix is having the conversation with yourself and getting some awareness. The second step is committing to create change around it. So that means, you know, baby steps. Let your forever lover uh, plan a date for you that includes some of the recreational intimacy in this example, or where you can have a conversation playing a card game or Jenga or something where you get you allow yourself to be more intellectual and without being in competition, because a lot of marriages, people are competing with each other inside, which creates a whole nother funky dynamic. So allow this to happen as like a baby step to kind of see how you play and kind of in a. I don't mean this in a clinical disassociative way, like step out of your body, but just kind of backing up a little bit when you're doing this joint endeavor together, this date night that's different than you would normally do. Allow yourself to look at how you're reacting and responding to your lover when they're trying to awkwardly play with you in this new way, because sometimes the way that we're responding is what makes your other person say, I'm not, I'm not safe here. She doesn't appreciate the date that I created. She's judging everything that I did. I can't order anything right off the plate. Oh, I ordered the Swedish massage and she really wanted deep tissue, right? Like catch yourself to see how this person is reacting to you when you are just being hopefully honest about what you want, but also listening to how you say it to the other person. This is all about taking the onus that you can control because you can't control your spouse. You can't control how they're receiving or perceiving or how they're acting, but you can control you. And it's hard to control something that you, you're you not willing to acknowledge is having a response or reaction. So like, let's look at you, start with me, the person inside the professional. And then we can look at like, you know what, lover? I really don't like how you're handling this, right? Like now we can move into a deeper conversation and co-create the boundaries together, but that's gonna take a couple of beats and it won't be quick. I wish I could tell you it would be, but it won't. So what, what keeps coming up for me as you're talking is communication and vulnerability. Yeah. We must communicate our wants, needs, and desires because how would the other person be able to fulfill those if we're not communicating them? And then the same with vulnerability, we have to be vulnerable to be able to communicate our wants, needs, and desires. So that leads me to, you know, entrepreneurship. We, we have to communicate in so many ways with our clients, with prospective clients, just putting out content. We're communicating our personal brand. We're communicating our business. We're communicating our skills and what differentiates us. And we have to be vulnerable to do that. So here we are having to be vulnerable in our personal relationships, having to be vulnerable in our business. And that's a lot of vulnerability. It is. And sometimes I think a lot of us, especially if there has been trauma or difficulty in relationships in the past, we don't trust as easy. And that vulnerability is a really hard thing to step into. It is. And one of the reasons that vulnerability is hard is because of shame. And shame is typically just minimizing it a little bit just for um, 
the reality that we don't want to get like super clinical, super deep with everyone is looking at where shame is coming from. And it's typically because of the secret or secrets that have kind of stacked up. When we take the secret away, the shame disappears. The guilt may still be there and some other emotions and, and feelings. But when we say, you know what? I used to have shame around, I don't know, a, a dimple in my thigh. So I always needed the lights out when I'm with my husband, right? Like just, I, 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 he might feel it, but I don't want him to see it, right? Like there's just something different. Or I might have shame around, I'm sitting at the table with all of these highfalutin entrepreneurs that have won awards and done this and done that. And my business is only a couple years old. And I feel like I'm such a baby in this business that although maybe in my corporate life or in my nonprofit life, I've really done some amazing work, but I feel so insecure here. Um, I've never done content before. And now, you know, I have this amazing business and brand strategist, Dr. Robert Graham saying like, no, you got to show up, right? <laughs> like, you're like, what? I was always able to be behind the camera before. And now I'm, I'm showing up in a different, more powerful way. And that's really scary to me. So looking at like, well, what was the secret? What were you hiding? Oh, because you like to read notes and you think reading notes on camera is bad. Absolutely not. Every successful anchor in the world reads notes right off the teleprompter, right? Like mm -hmm. just being in a different circle of people who can elevate you and, and don't try to project onto you their style or their way that keeps you locked into that shame is one of the first steps is looking at who your circle is. Is your, cir your circle full of people who are like, oh, don't wear that. That color doesn't look right for you. You need to grow your hair. You need to cut your hair. You need, if they're trying to change you to shape shift into what they think is acceptable, you might have to really look at repositioning them. Doesn't mean they're bad people. It could mean that they love you enough to say, like, I'm afraid that the trolls will get you. That's OK. But you may need a different circle of people that can lift you up when it comes to those bigger, bolder choices, if you will, mm -hmm. that will uh, kind of highlight the strength in the vulnerability and not lock you in the shame to keep you in this raw, uncomfortable place of the vulnerability. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say to that. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to link a, a couple other episodes that we've had on shame mm -hmm. so that we don't have to dive deep into it here, mm -hmm. but it is something so important to, to be able to recognize and then move away from. Yeah. Um. So, okay. So let's just quickly, if we're thinking about our relationships and how they impact our business, like mm -hmm. why are our personal relationships so important, important for us to be able to achieve success in business? So, you know, I use an unofficial tag, right? It's, it's totally unofficial. It's not a tagline. It's really a kind of like a visual highlighter of what we do for our company, we amplify intimacy from the bedroom to the boardroom. And intimacy is clearly not just sex, right? Like we've already established that there's so many other layers to it. And the reason we say to the, to the boardroom is because when you show up powerfully in your personal bedroom, right? You're the, the most intimate place you can be outside of the bathroom, right? Like it's the most personal place you can be. When you can show up powerfully, you can communicate for what you want. You feel confident, you feel sexy, you feel energized, you're creative, you're spontaneous appropriately to when you need to be spontaneous. You plan appropriately to when you need to plan. And so many juicy, good things come out of that. And the, the, proverbial bedroom of your personality, you're amplified in the boardroom of your life, of your business, of the work you do. You're more innovative. You're more creative. You're more empathetic. You're a better, stronger leader because you know that all these things don't just come naturally for every single person because there were some things you had to work on in the personal bedroom of yourself to be more vibrant and vivacious. And now that you've done the work, hopefully, you know that when you have someone on your team coming to you saying, you know what, Dr. Robin, I'm really, I'm really not sure how to do this. And I don't want you to judge me. I don't want you to think you hired wrong. I'm, I'm just a little stuck here. You can guide them with the sensitivity that you would guide your partner without crushing their soul and their hopes and dreams because they did something you didn't necessarily like, or they did something that wasn't in the, that wasn't done in the way that you would have preferred it. You have a different version of compassion when you can work on yourself personally that's kind of the bedroom motif 
all the way to the boardroom. And when you have relationships where you've been betrayed, where you feel like you can't trust anything that's breathing, where you've maybe physically been harmed, emotionally harmed, financially bound, then you are going to show up in your business and your entrepreneurial endeavors risk averse which is the wrong place to be as an entrepreneur. If you're not willing to take risks, you're going to be really afraid to invest in yourself to create other bonds. I won't say replacement bonds, but other bonds with a, a coach or an advisor or mentor, a sponsor, an ally. Like you're going to have a lot of challenges being able to create powerful partnerships, which could take your baby, your entrepreneurial business to the next level because of not only what happened in those personal relationships, but the imprint that it left inside of you that you weren't able to mold over. Take mm -hmm. the lesson, not the person, right? Take the lesson, not the person, and be able to really say, okay, this is what I got from my relationship with Nikita. This is what I got, what good I got from it. I also learned to be more discerning in some other ways. Well, now in my business, I can be more discerning when someone sends me an email saying, I'm I saw your SEO on your website is is bad and let me show you how to fix it when they have no idea that I'm already working with someone who's mm -hmm. done it or it's already done, but they're just sending me these kind of urgent scarcity emails mm -hmm. that if depending on where I am in my relationship to my business and what I know that I know that I know versus what I don't, I'm not going to be quick to send a payment to someone who hasn't been vetted. I'm not gonna be quick to share my network and my research or connect people that don't deserve to be connected quite yet because my discernment has increased because of the lessons that I learned personally from Nikita, Tina, Tan, John, and, and Jasmine, right? So all those things are are directly linked to each other. Mm, I love it so much. And it, it brings us almost full circle to, you know, confidence is key. And the more confident we are in our personal self, the more confident we are going to be as a business owner. And confidence helps when we're confident in ourselves, it dem we demonstrate that we trust ourselves. Yes. And therefore, then other people will trust us. And since trust determines buying practices, at, at the end of the day, that is absolutely critical. And it brings us to mindset work and you know, I think there's there's so many examples here and we'll wrap up real quickly, but there's so many examples within this conversation of that tie into our relationship with God. Yeah. And, you know, having that pause and praying, like what what am I missing here? Where is the or what is the problem that is holding me back? What is the past scenario? Is it like you said, a secret, you know? you know, asking God to help you identify what those are so that you can then take the action that's necessary to work on them and build yourself up personally so that you can build yourself up as a business owner. Yeah, I would also say that sometimes God is showing you. Mm -hmm. God is showing you the people. You said, I need help. I need guidance. I need support. I need someone other than my mind to talk to. And God sends you um, and I'm I'm being biased here because I know her to be a good human, but God sends you, Dr. Robin, you met her at a conference and you're like, I don't know what this is. And we just feel connected and let's have a call. And the whole time you're processing because of your betrayal and your mistrust and your frustration of being hurt, you're saying, well, I don't know what she wants from me. You asked God to send you and God sent you and then you rejected it, right? So just being really mindful that sometimes God is answering you right in front of your face, but because we're anchored in our fear and not our inner brilliance, which I believe is the Holy Spirit and being an open channel to receive everything that God is truly trying to pour into you. Sometimes we're batting it away and saying, what's, what's going on, God? Why didn't you send me that? Why didn't you fix this? Why didn't you help me? It's like, I'm, I'm trying, baby girl. <laughs> I'm trying to get it through, but you keep pushing. So sometimes you need to come into your body, do a little grounding work do some body scans, deep breathing, just really just kind of anchor into your flesh so that your spirit can connect you more. So remember we're spiritual beings, right? And sometimes it's really hard when we're also not only disconnected from our spirit, but we're disconnected from our own body. It's really hard to hear when you're in disconnection. So mm -hmm. re-anchor would be my suggestion. Mm. On that note, that was powerful. That was just beautiful. So 
All right, listeners, I thank you so much for being here. And Nikita, I am so honored that you joined me again today. And as always, it was a fabulous conversation. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, or even work with you? Yeah, thank you so much. And you know, this was like a long time coming. I'm so grateful that we were able to match our very productive, not busy, productive schedules. Uh, So if anyone's interested in learning just more about what we do at ThigPro Balance and Relationship Management Institute, go to thigpro.com, which is T-H-I-G-P-R-O.com. And there's also some podcasts that we have there, Balance Boldly and The Lazy Overachiever. Everything you need is right there on the homepage. Click and play and look around and do all the things. And if you're really willing to connect, there's a connection button. We can have a joy activation call. Mm, Beautiful. All right, everyone. Thanks again for being here. And if you would be so kind, please leave us a rating and review because that is how I can get great guests like Nikita, even though we're friends, she could have said no if I wasn't, you know, publishing great episodes. So please share it and spread the love with anybody that you know that may be struggling with their relationship or struggling in their business. Because as we know, there is a root to that somewhere. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. Until next time, remember to smile.